and welcome to the best show it's team gospel live where we bring you nothing but the best conversations music and games yeah boy yes hosted by your favorite ulindo guse and oami today we are talking about forgiving yourself if you were an alcoholic a drug addict or even a smoking addict that's actually a very interesting topic linda now today we are asking the question how does one go about forgiving himself or herself and joining us to answer this question is recovered addict usia bonga and unil tando who works as a therapist and a social worker on a daily basis so to keep the conversation going don't forget to send through your comments on our social platforms using the hashtag hashtag TGL on SID. Right now though, it's time for us to start the show with a musical performance from Inspired. We hope you guys enjoy. Tateni gogu samani kapele ni lunge zinga boti ma iziba ni masinlinde sin kapele zinga zinge wena kapele wena. for that beautiful song we'll definitely chat to them a little bit later about it right now though it's time for us to get into today's topic of the day which is forgiving yourself and today's question is how does one go about forgiving themselves right now we are joined by upu daniel to help us understand today's topic a bit better welcome to team gospel live thank you thank you for having me so first question yeah what is sanka what does sanka stand for and what do you guys do all right, Sanka, it's South African National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependency. We're basically a rehab that helps 
uh, teens, adults, everyone else that have a problem with addiction or who have a problem with substance abuse. So where I'm from, there's a program called Gimoja, I Am Fine Without Drugs, that specifically deals with teens or youth that actually need information about drugs or need to rehabilitate themselves. So I'm actually a Gimoja coach to make sure that the information spreads, we get to the bottom or to the root of yeah. everything else so that our young people are actually uh, knowledgeable and have a place where they can go to actually get help. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I want to know from you, you work with a lot of young people that are around substance abuse and that abuse substances. What would you say are some of the causes that lead to them abusing substances? Uh, normally people would say it's boredom. You see, teen, if teens or young people don't have something to do, they actually they will eventually go to drugs. But normally it will be, you know, uh, things that actually happen around the community. See, nowadays uh, gender-based violence is one of the things that actually make people go into drugs. Yeah. They need an escape of what is it that is actually happening. So it's not going to be just a, sp a specific thing. Maybe uh, peer pressure, like I'm saying, gender-based violence or boredom or loneliness. So it will be a variety of couple of things that will go to a specific teens, but mostly those are uh, mostly the, the common ones that actually we face on yeah. a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So we know that obviously healing as a person, you have certain steps that you have to follow. Yeah. And admitting is is actually one of the one first, of the right? Things, yes. So how does one get to that point where they admit that they do have a problem? Um, that's a very good question. And some, some people take time to actually get there. So you see, first of all, when people use or are addicted to drugs, first of all, they don't see it as a problem. So if you see it as a problem and you admit that you have a problem, then the treatment itself or the recovering process, it becomes more easier. And for you to accept that I do have a problem and this is what I need to do so that I can get there. Most of the people go through the 12-step program that we have, 12-step program, that first starts with uh, the serenity of you, believing in this God and everything else. Yeah. And then from there, you can actually transcend from denying and accepting and admitting that you actually have a problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I want to know, once someone's admitted and accepted that they have a problem, because sometimes as people, when you make like an error, like a common human error, you yeah. find it hard to forgive yourself. What are the steps that someone can take towards forgiving themselves? First of all, we, we, we believe in, in therapy. You see, one of the things that people or our people or young people don't actually engage in therapy. So you have to first see the things that are actually happening. If you see as a, you, you make a, a common problem and the society judges you on, based on that problem, you'd find it hard for yourself to actually forgive yourself. So you have to talk to someone. Like, like I'm saying, this is what we do. We let the, the, t the teenagers or youth out there that we are there for you. And whatever it is that you did, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You, know, you see, So you have to first accept and find someone else who will actually assist That's you. True. You know, Like I was saying, the 12-step program that will, first of all, know what is it that you have to do, know what to do to admit that you have a problem, and then how do you deal with that problem, and so forth and so on. Okay, so I want to know, after you've dealt with it, why is it important to forgive oneself? Why is forgiveness so important? Why is forgiveness, forgiveness so important? You see, uh, and everything else that we do in life, it's not, you are, you are not living in a bubble or you're not living alone. Yeah. So if you start by forgiving yourself, it will be even easier for you to forgive other people. And it will be easier for you to move on from such, such things. It's like a relationship. If you move out from a relationship, accept and forgive that some of the things that you cannot change and accept those that you can change. So for you to actually forgive yourself, it will give you the process to forgive others and move on from whatever situation that, it, uh, that you are yeah. facing at that point in time. So what advice do you have for teenagers who have recovered from, you, from being an, like an addict, addict, but find it very impossible for them to forgive, them, to forgive themselves mm. for whatever that they did in the past? You see, like, like I was saying uh, when we started is that one of the things that you have to do, like you were saying, forgiveness, you have to first admit that you have a problem. And then we as, as Kimoja, we have a, a, a slogan that says, uh, lighting a, a education or something like, it's, not, it's a lighting of a fire. 
not a mm. filling of a bucket. So it means that when you light someone else, and when you inspire someone else, it means that it's easier for them to actually forgive them. So the, the, the message that I have for them is, first of all, try by all means to surround yourself with positive people. Mm. People that will actually make sure that you do not go back to being an addict or going back to experimenting with drugs. Uh, surround yourself with those people. Most of the people don't have an understanding. Our parents, the society, but if you're around people that like ourselves or you come to Sanka yeah. or you see, you, you, you find a, a therapist, someone will actually show you the importance of being alive and having that self-respect. Then that, in that way you will conquer the, the, this, I would say, pandemic of drugs. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's the message that I will actually have for the teens out there. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the knowledge and the wisdom that you've imparted on us. I hope you guys learned as much as we did. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Teen Gospel Live. All of these and more on SID Media TV. Welcome back, guys. You're tuned in to Eighteen Gospel Line, and today we're talking about forgiving yourself. We asked the question, how does one go about forgiving himself or herself? Right now, though, it's time for us to check out what talent TGI has got. Let's go. Hi, my name is Kamogolo Mashela and I'm from Tosloras. Hi, my name is Lesorono Lomorano and I'm from Timbis. I became a visual art student because I love art and it is my passion. No, actually, I don't know if I'm really the second person or not because the only person who I know can draw and who taught me how to draw is my big brother. I started drawing at the age of six. I saw my brother draw cartoons and then I watched him. I was like, okay, I copied him and I wasn't that great. But when I continued through the years, it, I became, I was learning how to draw. I didn't practice, I just draw. That's the way of practicing. In the day, I would like draw about from one hour to four hours, or if it's a Saturday or Friday or Sunday, I will draw the whole day depending on what am I doing, if I have a homework or a project. Visual art kept me out of trouble by focusing on drawing and don't, not thinking about anything, just focusing on what I am doing. Mm, when I was growing up, I found out that I have even more talents than what meets the eye. So I focused more on that talent and then accidentally ignored what I knew the best is to ruin. So I kept on doing the things that were new to me until that I realized that the talents that I have earned, I am losing them. So I have to have another plan to jump onto my first talent. To keep practicing your talent, if you love it, never stop giving up and keep on going to do your best. What I would give as an advice is that don't listen to what people say to you. Even if you are not that good at it, just keep on practicing and practicing and then you'll get even better at it. And some people might be jealous, but don't just listen to them. Just focus on your work. Oh, 
you guys are so talented hey i wish i could have the level of talent that you guys have make sure you keep sharing your talents with us whether it's music drama art dance and poetry we love receiving them make sure you send them to the number on your screen now tgl's got talents for our 13 to 18 year olds so you guys get sending and you could stand the chance to win an awesome tgl's got talent prize right now though it's time for us to check out what you guys are saying about today's topic of the day over in live chat let's go it's that time of the show where we get to interact on our social platforms. So you guys answered today's question, which is how does one go about forgiving oneself? And this is what you guys have to say on our platforms. O Blessing said, in terms of coming clean on what you did, Olindiwe said, I have not mastered that, so I won't know. We really love hearing from you guys. Remember to keep sending in your comments using the hashtag, hashtag TGL on SID. Right now though, it's time for us to take a break. We'll be right back. Coming up on the next episode of Teen Gospel Live. We asked the question, should condoms be distributed in schools? There's this assumption that they are most of them are sexually active and that's a no. Get some music from Shantua a cappella. I will sing of you, my lord. We also play a game with our guests. Oh, where am I? Yes, ah, it's Team Gospel Live on. Hope Channel or SID Media Digital on YouTube. Don't, Don't miss, miss it. it. Welcome back. You are still tuned into It's Teen Gospel Live, and today we are talking about forgiving yourself. Now, earlier on, we spoke to Upu Daniel, who told us the importance of forgiving yourself if you have been abusing substances. And right now, we're joined by Usi Abonga, who is a recovered addict. Welcome to Teen Gospel Live. Hey, how, thank you guys for having me. So, kindly introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you started abusing um, substances or a substance. Of course. Uh, my name is Yabongam Kwanazi. I'm a young teenager from Tembisa. I grew up uh, in Tembisa in a, in a small township named uh, Emoyeni. In Emoyeni, that's where my family and I had a, a young history of uh, ups and downs as a family, you know. Yeah. Um, after a small downfall from my family, we ended up moving out of that house and into another uh, area in Tembisa, which is Hospital View. That is whereby I came into contact with um, people, places, and things whereby I started um, falling under the trap of um, substance abuse and whereby I started losing myself emotionally, physically, and mentally so to yeah. um, the, the, the trap of drug abuse. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a brief history of how I fell into yeah, yeah. substances okay. and so forth. Okay, so you mentioned Lucy, you and your family moved from a specific area to Hospital View. Yes. What made you start using substances after that move? After the move, I felt uh, an emotional disconnection, more especially with my mother, because there was tension be between my parents' marriage, right? And um, my parents, unfortunately, had to separate after our move. So after that um, hold of the emotional detachment from my mother and my uh, uncertainty of what my family has to go through next, yeah. I sort of uh, fell under um, depression, anxiety, and a whole lot of other emotions that I couldn't deal with by myself. So how was how was the experience of using a substance? Um, I cannot necessarily give it a full picture, but from my um, personal point of view, um, it was very much disruptive, especially to my life, in, in aspect to everything, my, my education, my academics, um, even my, you know, attendance, even at home, you know, uh, especially like family gatherings and so forth. Um, you t I, tend to, I tended to have this um, sort of negativity coming to gatherings and so forth. Like people would ask about me and I'd, I'd be around, but hide myself and whenever I'm around, I come through. Yeah. Um, it, come, it becomes a thing of, oh, you're around. And maybe sometimes I, I come across, I come through um, whilst I'm intoxicated and, you know, mm. I get judgment and whatsoever. But then I still didn't have a care in the world because that's what um, you know abusing drugs for me did. It, it made me careless Not and care. you know. Yeah. Uh, so I want to know. Obviously, you've now recovered. Congratulations yes. on that. I want to know what made you stop. Like, why did you decide to stop? Well, admittedly, I will say that I was. I've been. I've, I have been, and I still am on a journey of. 
finding God, you know. And for me, that is literally my definition of how I got saved. Because um, after a while, you know, you tend where it got to a point where I, I felt like I lost my sanity. And in order for me to have come back into the world, to become, you know, true to my nature, I had to find God. And that happened to me through this uh, spiritual program that I attended uh, through my re rehabilitation as part of NA, which is a spiritual program, to find God and to admit to myself that I cannot uh, handle by myself. And that's why my life took its course into the worst, basically. So finding God was my journey and still is my yeah. recovery as, a, as I stand. So from young person to another young person, what would you say to teens out there who are who are probably having a substance use problem or who are also recovering or who even want to think of trying something, what advice do you have for them? Uh, the best advice that I got from another mentor or influencer of my life is hope. So the way that um, hope can be broken down for me is that hold on, pain ends. You know, mm. as much as we go through life, you know, not knowing or not being sure about whatever it is, you know, yeah. hope is the one thing, the one substance that can actually embrace the the, the one thing that you can actually set, set yourself towards in life, you know. And knowing that, you know, God has um, full, complete control over your life and what destiny you can um, get to. Just, you know, keep on pushing and keep on being persistent and never give up, you know, never look at the the storm and think that you failed. There's always, you know, the rainbow that follows and so yeah. forth. So just keep being encouraged and keep smiling and keep pushing, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's my message to everyone out there. Thank you so much, Siabonga. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for sharing your story with us, guys. Hold on, pain ends. Let's find out what you guys are saying about today's topic over in live chat. <laughs>
by yeah. singing, yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming through. They're going to be singing Tata is Ungi Pi Uchesu, ladies and gentlemen. That was the inspired. We gave you guys an incredible beginning, a spectacular middle, and this is the end of our show. We hope to end it on a high note. I hope you guys have learned a lot from today's episode. I hope you guys took some notes. Make sure you share the notes that you took with your friends. And let us know what you think about today's topic on our social media platforms using the hashtag, hashtag CGL on SID. We'd like to thank our guests for coming through today and making this show so lady, so beautiful and informative. Right now, though, it's time for us to love and leave you with a performance from Inspired. It's love and light. Goodbye. <laughs>